Okay. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> you see that big old flap? Hey everyone, this is Jeff of Tal Flatermouse. I hope you're having a good day. Today we'll be testing a prototype 12 gauge shotgun slug from St. Petersburg, Russia. And these were sent to us by our good friend Alexei Lavrov. Check out his channel and see what he's making next. Now I think after watching this video you'll agree that these 67 caliber solid brass slugs just might be some of the most powerful slugs we've ever tested. On the right we see the four fluted prototype that we tested a few months ago. But Alexei believed he could get better external cavitation by using a three flute, which gives it much larger channels. And what's really interesting is these two slugs weigh almost identical in weight. The four flute weighs in at about 543 grains, and the three flute is 544 grains. Very close. Now these are a Sabo slug that require full rifling. The purpose of the Sabo is to prevent any contact with the barrel and also keeps it centered. You'll notice that I added a strip of electrical tape around the base of the slug. This is to act like a tire tread giving it traction between the slug and the Sabo. If we can't transfer the spin from the rifling of the shotgun into the slug because of that slippage, we won't have enough spin to have a stable flying slug. Welcome back to later folks. Jeff. Officer Greg and Sergio back there, we brought out today with us our good friend Doug. He's going to help us try out a new slug from Alexei in Russia. You saw a little while ago Alexei's submission here of the Extremely Russian Penetrator. A four-fluted Extreme Penetrator style round designed kind of like those Lehigh Extreme Penetrators. He, he modeled it exactly as, as the, you know. Yeah. With and, the uh, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I am new to your country. Yes. <laughs> Four flutes designed to look sort of like a little uh, Phillips screwdriver. You've all seen this. It's it's a very popular rifle and handgun round. He designed it into a 12 gauge slug, but now he has sent through a three fluted extremely Russian penetrator. I don't think Lehigh is is done a three fluted one. I don't believe I've ever seen it. In yeah. Situation. He's a smart guy. He's in a he's a PhD in astronomy or astrophysics or something like that. So he's literally a rocket Astro scientist. Astro something. He's actually a rocket surgeon. <laughs> he's something, yes. So, so the uh, the three flute penetrators actually, in the in the early 90s, I was in a uh, in an all male uh, woodwinds band, <laughs> and we were called the. It was just a trio, and um, we we were called the three flute ex uh, extreme penetrators, but we didn't get very far. <laughs> We opened for, uh, I we, can't take you anywhere. I know. <laughs> anyway, let's give it a try. Doug is wearing today three different vests. He's got, he's got the little baby vest on the front. You saw this last one, the four fluted penetrator made it through two vests. So we're going to try the three flute here. We've got three level 3A panels of ballistic they're, armor. They're a little shot up, but are they? I had a noticed. little bit. Not, I hadn't noticed. They'll still they, stop rounds. They absolutely will. Yeah. So we're going to give it a try out of a rifled barrel. We have the Remington 870 with us today. It has a Remington barrel on it, so they should be fairly accurate uh, using his last, uh, his four, four flute penetrators as a reference. Yep. Doug's wearing proper eye protection and uh, helmet protection, so let's give it a try and see what it does. Let's try for the blue dot, yeah? Yep, I'm ready. Here we go. Ready. Holy crap. Wow, something went through. <laughs> went right through. In test number one using the Kronos high-speed camera, we can see that we have excellent stability of the slug. I believe the twist rate on Greg's rifled barrel is only one in 27. In other words, it makes one rotation every 27 inches. So it appears we had excellent engagement with the rifling, from the rifling to the Sabo to the slug. Had we not used the electrical tape around the slug, it would have slipped and the slug would have been tumbling through the air. Well, Who's that guy just wandering around back there? <laughs> we don't know. We don't know. <laughs> okay. Dumb punch. Of uh, it clearly went through three... Kevlar vest. Yes, it did hit the compromised section of the small ballistic vest. It went a little low from the tape, but we can see it penetrated right through here, punched right through all of these layers, dragging Kevlar fibers with it. And then here's what's cool. 
Oh, wow. Look at this. It started shoving Kevlar through in the front of him, but oh. <laughs> it drug t-shirt and Kevlar all the way through him out of the back. So wow. That uh, extremely penetrated Young, yeah, uh, young yeah. Douglas. No, well, what do you have to say about um, people saying the vest is compromised? It's well, it's polished. Should we, shouldn't we shoot it with a 45 or something like yeah, that? Show that. Let's do that. It'll, that first vest will catch it. We have a 45 out here today. We will shoot it. Um, as we have proven out here, I've been told in law enforcement for years, the minute a vest is hit by a bullet, it's done. you got to throw it away. Well, that's uh, a manufacturer's gimmick to get you to buy another one. Yeah. We've been shooting these vests out here, these and other ones, for years and years and years. Over and over. Yeah, it's, it's still, it of, still stops everything it's rated every for. Thing. And I've got a piece of Kevlar at home that I use in my CCW classes. They always say if it gets wet or in the sun, you got to throw it away. That thing has been out in the blazing sun and been <laughs> soaked for seven, eight years now, and it will stop every single bullet you shoot at it. So Yeah, everything it's ready for, 45, 9 millimeter, yeah. We'll 44 put a 45 millimeter. in here just to show you that it will, in fact, stop it. In the first vest, yeah, yeah. Shoot, shoot at the tape there. That's a pretty good... Yeah, we'll put it up here. Yeah. The 45 will stop right here, virtually guaranteed, and... Um, but the fact that that penetrator made it through <laughs> three level three A, that's that's like level nine A A A. <laughs> yep. Scientifically speaking. Yep. Uh, and right through Doug, just to show that that vest will stop will still stop bullets. When you're ready. I'm ready. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Some people don't like me. Sure. So there you go. So it was just right on the outside of the vest. Yep. Clogs with material, which is common for a hollow point hitting a fabric. Yep. Even that ragged vest still stopped to 45. And we hit it down here in the mushy part. Yeah, the worst possible place where it's been hit multiple, multiple times. Right. There's there's freaking holes that it could <laughs> pass through if it, yep. if it caught the right bus. But so uh, it's not that hinky, you know. These vests are, you know, no. overbuilt, if anything. Yeah. But for that. Um, and that's that's like a. 1999 vest or something. It's, yeah. it's an old vest. People were very, very small back then. I know. Look how tiny those Disco things were. Disco was king. Eisenhower was president. <laughs> it, Compared, it's it's hilarious. Yeah. The average police officer was uh, five foot two and 125 pounds. Yeah, I know. Look at that tiny ass little thing. <laughs> so, what is that going to protect you from? I don't from? even know. I don't even know. How what were they even... thinking back then? Okay. Shut up. Hobbits. Shut up, Jeff. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, uh, Extreme penetrator though, through three level three A vests. <laughs> That's nuts. Well, okay, what do we have now? We have a ballistic mask you might recognize from earlier videos. Piece of ballistic tape, high tech tape. <laughs> so these are level what, three A? Yeah. So we're gonna send it through a level three A vest, virtually guaranteed it's gonna go through into our styrofoam Vin Diesel head. But <laughs> backed up here, we've got the same three level three A yeah, was a body armor and Russian ballistic gel. Oh, okay. So, that that will stop it, my friend. <laughs> we have a total of four <laughs> level three A's. That, friends, is level twelve now, A A A A. Now this has been hit just with twenty two though. Yeah, so it should. And and we're gonna hit it right here where really nothing has been hit. Yeah. Or if if what's his name over here can uh, yeah, uh, aim that here. One uh, uh, that so one we're gonna try and put it there. <laughs> but but it is. What he's trying to say is it's not really all that compromised for a big giant slug. Right. It's still, if it's going to stop a bullet, well, what, it's stop Okay, a bullet. what's your prediction? Will it go through? It's going to go through this. <laughs> yeah. It's going to go through this. I think we're going to catch it somewhere back we here. We want to catch these things, you know? I, maybe. I, I think you're going to catch it at least in the Russian ballistic gel. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Okay, let's do it. Let's try Sun's it. Sun's coming out again. Oh, what? Holy what? <laughs> well, Jeez. we got a styrofoam explosion. <laughs> You'll notice that Greg used the same point of aim, the tape, and it once again is shot about an inch and a half low. The good thing here is we're showing consistency in accuracy of the slugs. I think the lesson we've learned here is don't get in a situation where you can get shot in the face with a very heavy, powerful and hard uh, Russian penetrating slug. So we got him, what, between the eyes, you said? Down yeah, here? right in there, yeah. So again, they hit low. My first one hit low, too. Well, yeah, so now we're gonna have to start compensating. It's, at least it's consistent. Yeah. We still got bullet shards in here from some other round. 
Anyway, hit low, blasted right through the mask. Look at this. Oh, man. That is a bad day. And Jeez. We've got uh He was mask. perfectly intact. Yeah, mask. Gosh. Now he looks more like a... Look at the force applied to the front of it. I mean, oh, no. that would have caved in your face. In face. Even if it didn't go through. Yeah, he looks like Mike Tyson now. Kind of like a <laughs> flattened up face. He needs we, the, the... Yeah, we just need a tattoo. Tattoos, yeah, yeah. We'll fix him up. But look at that. Oh, wow. Of course, it exited right out of the back of his head. Jeez. And then this was our first piece of Kevlar that was behind this mess. And over here, we find buried in here a still warm slug. So, although it hit over here and believe it or not, even cracked. The, yep, uh, that's the a new ballistic Yeah. Gun, it uh, hit with enough force to crack it and send a shard off of there. But we did capture. Yeah, once it hit the mask and went through the foam, then it started flying sideways and it became a lot easier to catch. Oh, yeah. So it lost its little frontal... Yeah, profile, yeah. So there you go. Try not the Look profile. at that. Is it still in good shape? It's in pretty good shape. It's not perfect. But, oh, it's a I little mean, mangled up. Yeah. yeah, you can see the nose. The nose is still in really good shape. Wow. The cylindrical part of it is in perfect shape, but it definitely took its brunt there. Yep. Wow. So the, the mass might have slowed it down a little bit. But, but definitely sent it flying out at a different Wow, point. that is cool. I'm glad we caught one finally. <laughs> yeah. Jeff claims that these are 80s workout tapes that he salvaged. Out of the trash can. Kathy Smith. Poor Kathy Smith. She's now 76 years old. But is back, she? Back in 87. Oh. No. <laughs> back in 87, she was pretty hot. Yep. And, uh... Jeff made good use of most of these tapes, <laughs> especially this one. I didn't even know my wife had them. <laughs> sure, wink, wink. Especially this one that says great buns and thighs. There you go. There's Kathy. Thanks, Kathy. So what we're going to do is see if Kathy and her great buns and thighs, her, her buns of steel, can stop an extreme penetrator. We've got, what, 15 tapes here? There's quite a few. Some of these back here, we don't actually know what's on them. Well, it says what's on it. It yeah. has labels it on there. It says what you want us to think is on them. Stretch and strengthen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we're going to get rid of all the evidence real quick. Nobody has a VHS player anymore anyway, so Jeff's pretty safe on this. All the evidence is, uh, is <laughs> but we're going to send it through all these tapes and then hope to catch it with the uh, the three levels of body armor in the back. So let's see what it'll do. You think it'll make it all the way through? I think so. I think so. <laughs> but will it veer off or will it go straight through? This one's called The Firm Volume 2. Yeah, that's like a movie or something sure, with Tom yeah, Hanks. It is. It's a movie about a pool boy who <laughs> <laughs> comes by and <laughs> exactly 90 minutes later is over. Oh, jeez. Wow, that's a mess. That's very scientific. Thank you, Kathy. Um, <laughs> Can we tell? We put them all back in perfect order, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. it, hit, uh, it hit pretty much nose on. We can tell by the perfect cylinder. Yeah. And we see that it started tearing a lot of pieces out, like we see with everything, hard drives and everything else. Oh, it's a tough time playing that one. This one hit in an unfortunate area of Kathy's video. Hit her leg. Her buns of steel. Her buns of steel. Blasted through the firm. Sorry, Tom Hanks. Tom Cruise. <laughs> Tom Cruise. And then right there, Tone Edit. Stop. That doesn't look right. <laughs> no, it doesn't. So we can't find the round. We determined that it probably hit and pushed these That's things. a lot. Look at that. There's the last one Yeah. Look at right there. It was going straight through. But it hit there and I think it shoved all these guys out of the way and then went up there and touched. We're going to actually review some of the tape here real quick and see <laughs> can if we can. you see anything on there? there? Oh, there's where it went. You can see right there. Oh, okay. It just happens to be right there that's in the commercial. <laughs> oh. So. YouTube videos, kids back in the 80s, uh, used to be on VHS tapes, <laughs> and they mailed you all of the subscripted. Uh, like <laughs> yeah, you'd actually get a to. tape in your mail. Yeah. Oh, you. There was only like 100 people at. Yeah, there was only 100 people on YouTube, and they mailed you a tape. Yeah. It was YouTube. Actually, that's not far off from what Netflix started out with. Right. That's very true. Now, in this shot, Greg once again used the same point of aim, and we had about the same point of impact, about an inch and a half low. Now at the time we had no idea where the slug went, now we know it shot out at a pretty good velocity, 90 degrees out the side. I don't know if uh, <laughs> VCR tapes are the
ballistic medium of the future, but it was kind of fun shooting them. And they turned out to be a pretty tough target. I expected that slug to go right through them with no problem at all, but nope. Target, a bowling pin. So for science purposes, because these have been hitting consistently low, <laughs> we're going to aim here and hit here. If it, if it, uh, everyone's been, a, you know, inch and a half low or something like yeah, that. they've been almost exactly <laughs> every time. Four, yeah. Forehead of the mask down to the nose, <laughs> Kathy Smith's head down to her uh, other regions. And, uh, down there, care. Right. Down to her buns of steel. Yeah. And then, of course, three layers of ballistic. Uh, if it happens to go through, I don't think it will. Yeah, this is hardwood. If it hits here in the, in the belly of the thing, I think we're probably going to catch it this time in the wood. We'll but see. Yeah. These things are also impossible to cut open and examine, so if it catches it in there. <sighs> I might be able to use a grinder or something. Oh. I don't know. A big hammer. You log in on grinder from yeah. time to time, anyways. Okay, I am ready. All right, aim here, Dot. Here we go. You're not going to find it, Sergio. <laughs> he is. He's the bullet whisperer. <laughs> he's we're pretty quiet, good. If we're quiet for a couple seconds, he'll, he'll listen and he'll hear he it. He uses infrared <laughs> Call coyote it. skills yeah, or whatever. He'll hear it calling out in the riverbank. River yeah. Bank. You could hear that thing after after it hit. You could hear it. Zzz. Yeah, it shot went went through it. Yes, because we aimed here, and just like we expected, it's odd how consistent that is. But yeah, we hit down here in the belly of. You the, can't uh, blame Officer Greg, you know. Well, you can. Well, oh well, yeah, we, we will, will, and we will. Yeah. Well, Brian or Danny could have done that, <laughs> but we hit down here just a little bit to the right of the tape, so it was a little bit off to the side. That's probably me. But check this out, a little bowling pin vagine here where it uh, squeezed out the back. and uh, I thought it would stop in there. Well, I did too. That's pretty impressive because these things, folks, are super, super hard. They are. Uh, you, could, you could hit it with bowling balls and it yeah. won't hurt it. Well, you can, <laughs> shoot, you can shoot it with handgun rounds for months and months and months and it will never ever yeah. give up the rounds. It absorbs them all in there. Yeah. That thing's not only squeezed out of here, but this is what's impressive. That slug made it out of here, opened itself up, squirted out, and then this is a little weird polymer shell closed right back down around it. Yeah. But spit it completely, a, completely missed our soft body armor, you think, then, it right? It spit a bunch of wood out at it. Yeah, it completely missed it, and that it was only 18 inches away from it yeah, or whatever. So it hit, and then automatically, zoop. Yeah, it went straight up and north. Out, out to the berm. Wow. The yeah. safety berm. Yep. Impressive, though, to make it through that. Oh, yeah. Well, Sergio has been chewing this bubble gum since we got here <laughs> just in time. For uh, we're gonna try that one of the uh, three fluted penetrators into this ball of silly putty. Now Sergio's been forming this into a ball. The minute we set it down, it immediately starts to turn into a big old gooey pile. So we got to be kind of quick. But we're testing to see whether these flutes will actually hit this uh, silly putty and channel it outward, like like the. Or if it's just a gimmicky idea, you know, because there's never, lots of gimmicky ideas out there. You never, never know. Yeah, and it's not. It has, it's not a reflection of 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 um. No, it's Alexi or anything it's a like that. Reflection of Sergio. No, it's it's <laughs> like he made the design after the Lehigh defense. He yeah. scaled it up. Look at that big ball of like flesh-colored goo. But extreme penetrators, they penetrate. Well, because they're not made out of lead, they're made out of brass, which is a lot, lot harder than lead. Okay, I'm ready. Here we go. All right, here it comes. Again, we have good stability. Uh, Greg again made its adjustment for the point of impact. Everything looks good. Just not the kind of damage I expected with this type of round. In fact, I expected this Silly Putty to just blow into many pieces. Now remember that Silly Putty is a non-Newtonian fluid, kind of like cornstarch and water. Sergio, Sergio is very handy. Sergio's the round founder. He doesn't want to be on camera, though. <laughs> well, he found it. Too bad you come out here getting on camera. Yeah. Well, that thing is in perfect condition, too. Oh, wow. No. Okay, it still has the, the tape on there from, I had to bulk them up a little bit. Yeah, and tape them down so they wouldn't. You can take a tape so off. So it would fly straight. You guys should have strapped them down. <laughs> well, it, it, So that um, was what, vest number three you found yeah. it in? The third vest. Oh, wow. After it went through and cratered this 
But it so didn't. It, it didn't blow it apart like no. I thought. You know. You can see the little uh, fibers in there where it tore its way through. But yeah, we didn't see any big giant flutes like you sometimes right. see. Right. I thought it was. It, 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 you know, think of the the front of a ship cutting through the water. You know, the the wake. I you do. know, separating it in three I ways. Yes. I think of the front okay, of the ship up. cutting through water there. often. Oh. Look at this, it's sticking to my ring. <laughs> Boy, that is a big ball of goo. Yeah. Big ball of goo actually is my uh, <laughs> oh, no. untitled, un, uh, my unauthorized autobiography. <laughs> big ball of goo, the OG story. <laughs> you can find it on Amazon and wherever milk is sold. Well, oh. we have this TFM uh, Bitcoin and we put it here in the old angle iron. This is a piece of sloped lead armor. Yeah, we're gonna not shoot it flat on, but at uh, an no. angle. Shoot it at an angle. Now, the first penetrator, the four-fluted penetrator, made it right through. It was one of the very few slugs that has punched right through that heavy, heavy lead plate. Yeah. So we're expecting this one to probably do the same since they're about the same weight. But this one's at an angle this time, a little yeah. bit of an angle. A little bit of an angle for safety. A little effect. more, well, and it's makes it a little harder for something to go through it, you know. But we also have uh, this vest out here to try and catch some of the lead shards and or the round if it the, passes on the through. lead spalling yeah the, the, the stuff breaking off the back of it okay let's do it before we lose light let's, go, let's try it good luck oh man that's got a kick the lead plate is of course solid lead uh weighs 30 pounds and is over one and a half inches thick and this slug went through it like it was made out of styrofoam. In a recent video where we had a slug called the Dixie ILX, a hard cast lead slug did not even make it halfway through this thing. What happened? Well, what happened, Jeffrey, is that it hit about where we expected and these dang penetrator it, rounds. Again, I was expecting to see a, a three flutes, yeah. Flutes, flutes or flutes something, you know, like peeled back you know but it just punched nope. through and look here on oh the back oh my gosh it okay i do see a fl some fluting there and some spalling that's what that's spalling when actual, stuff is broken off the back actual spalling not, yeah. not splatter spall the bullet when a bullet strikes a steel plate and splatters that's one thing that's not spalling a lot of those armored guys have have screwed up that term so bad <laughs> But if you look, but, the, but I'll tell you what the, the world of tank guys they fixed know them. what you're talking they fixed about. Them. <laughs> yeah, it's because if you're a, a video game geek inside of a tank, you know your science. You know what spalling is. Yeah, it's coming inside to kill your video game. Yeah, it's pieces of the tank broken off virtually. Yeah. <laughs> so it went down here. This was sitting down below. Sergio found this. The round actually penetrated through. Must have skipped off of this, kaboom, and yeah. hit the vest, and we found it sitting right down here. But there it is. Oh, look at that mangled up nose of that thing. Still got three flutes. Yeah, but just tore the nose off of that thing. And then here's what's cool: your electrical tape. Yeah. <laughs> it survived. It still survived. Yeah, these things are, are spinning really good, so I know I have good engagement with the shot cup. We aren't we aren't having that um, sabo slip, which I called last time. Oh. Where you lose the spin, it just the, the slug just spins in the sabo, and if if you don't have good engagement, yeah, we have excellent engagement. We have excellent spin, good stability. If your sabo slips and it's not engaging, yeah, you've got we issues. Just had, it's 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 not that that he made the slugs too small. It's that the 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 sabos I have are a little too thin. He didn't know what size sabos I had. I you know you have type one. They're not the type magnums three. or anything like that. No, no, they're all they're all different thickness. This is a shot cup, you know. Look at the nose of that thing. That is gruesome. Yep. However, we will point out there are not many rounds that have made it through the lead plate consistently, and oh, these that's just effortlessly. These have done it. The, yeah. The four flute, the three flute. Now we need a two flute. Two flute would be see, good. Yeah. See if I, I don't know if that's and then either. a one flute. I think a two oh, flute that. would just look like a, a, a flat blade screwdriver. <laughs> yep. Yep. Good to go. I'm ready. All right, here we go. Whoa. <laughs> what the hell? Hold on, just in case. Whoa. 
not everything works are you perfectly every time. Are you but, sure? Yeah. Everything here. So works. that thing flew out at like two or three, four hundred feet per second, maybe. A little tiny pop, like a pellet gun. Yeah. I saw this stuff fly down range. Sergio found all this, so we know the projectile flew down here somewhere. <laughs> and while we're looking around for it, Sergio looks over at the ballistic jelly and sees it about two inches in there. <laughs> Extreme penetrator, my ass. <laughs> at, least, at least we hit hit it. It's next. <laughs> well. Jeff, we've got 24 inches of meat here, and uh, it's expired boneless pork loin. I've never seen meat come in a long tube like that, but no. um, it's, no, it's not going to be any Paul Farrell tr uh, ballistic <laughs> ballistic uh, felice test here, but we're going to... I've never seen uh, Hitchcock 45 use such a target. Yeah, or Paul Farrell. <laughs> so we're going to put, we're going to try like he'll, to put around in here. I'm going to aim up here. I'm going to try and put it in here and see if we can't get it to travel the whole length of this. Oh my god. 24 inches of meat. That's, <laughs> that's chapter the... 3 of my uh that's chapter 3 of my unauthorized autobiography. <laughs> oh man. All right. I'm I'm done squeezing the meat. Okay, yeah, quit handling the meat. Let's see if we can get it right in there. Okay, good luck. Yeah, I hope so. Okay, I'm ready. Shooting just a little bit high, so here we go. Okay. Oh, oh my goodness. Did you see that big old flap? Gives a whole new meaning to the word meat curtains. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> but man, it just look at that. It just laid it open. Coyotes are going to be way excited. Yeah. About this expired oh. pork. You. We're, and you found the slug, right? Yes. Where did it go? Here it is. Completely perfectly shaped. It does not have the uh, electrical tape on it. But, <laughs> but I mean, no def deformation whatsoever. Wow. Man, that was ugly. That is an ugly that is wound. A, I mean, 24 inch. I think I don't know. It may not have made it all the way yeah, through. I think it, it came left, out. It left maybe the last six inches down here somewhere. So it was probably only went out. But yeah. Man, look at that. At least we caught it. Yeah. We're not having much luck at first ca catching those things. And it's not scientific, but maybe if you were using that to hunt a big uh, 200 pound wild boar in Texas, that gives you an idea maybe of <laughs> the kind of range it's going to get inside of a. <laughs> a meat target. Yeah, that's gonna go through an elk or a Cape buffalo or whatever. Hangs like sleeve of a wizard. <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. That's lovely. I'm gonna set this over here for a <laughs> 